Some of the celebrities and dignitaries are waving at the camera coverage. They've got monitors in that booth, too, as Terrell Willis is tackled for a loss of one by inside linebacker John Durkos. But it's one of the nice points of this new Rutgers Stadium, Bob. Not only a state-of-the-art press box, but there's a chance you can sit back and, uh, and watch the game as well on the uh, TV monitors. <laughs> Bob Mulcahy of the Sports Authority and Michael Francis looking on over there. Jared Sloven to punt. His best effort of the contest. Fair caught by Vance Benton, the senior from Cleveland, at the 10-yard line. Taken by Vance Benton. So with 9.54 left, that Rutgers defense comes back onto the field. And see, at this point, Bob, that would have to be one of the, the highlights of the contest for, for Doug Graber. The play of that Rutgers defense and a new 4-3 scheme of John Gutekunst. And they're going to get a chance to pin Kent back again. I think it, they, they played well. Of course, they're playing against an offense that's staggered and stammered because of problems at quarterback and exchanges. But defensively, they've let their ears back and they can go after people is the way they want to play. And certain players have come up real big for them. Whistle sound, flags fly as Astron Watley carries on first down. But getting back to the defense, I think it's played well. I think it's nice. Let's hear this. Still first down. There's a false start again with the center quarterback exchange. But I think defensively, there you got to be encouraged because if you're pitching a shutout here, that's important. Lots of people are getting a chance to play. Their secondary, which is new, is getting a chance to be in there under pressure. Uh, I think this is the key to their season right here. The offense will come along and develop. But defensively, if they can stay tough and tight, uh, they're going to keep themselves in the ball games against some very strong opponents. Backed up to their five-yard line. Here's Astrid Watley. He goes ahead for three yards. 56, Rudy Smith getting up. The junior from Stony Point, New York, who played his high school football at Don Bosco Prep. Transfer from Maryland, Bob, at 6'5 and 265 pounds. Yeah, he could be a player for him. He just come around. He's got the size. They've got a bunch of young players in, the, in backup positions in that four-man front, and I'm sure before this evening is over, we're going to see more of them as this clock winds down. But surely Rudy Smith is one that they're going to count on to give him depth at that defensive end position. Challenger has to hurry with three left on the play clock and another false start. Tight end Mark Porter. They talked about Mark Porter as an experienced top player. He had a great spring, good blocker, fine receiver. They haven't had a chance to get him the football today but once. But Porter has jumped off sides a couple of times. False start on the offense. Second down. It could be that uh, it's the quarterback, a young, new quarterback in there. Lots of problems with uh, voice inflection, pulling people off sides with the snaps. It's kind of tough. And when you're trailing 21 nothing, the ball's sitting inside your five-yard line, that's, a pro that's a really a problem. There's your attendance, 33,279. That is the largest crowd on the Rutgers campus to witness a college football game. So they've got a new Rutgers Stadium record on opening night. And there's Jim Guarnera stopping Omar Williams. Guarnera, one of the front four of this Rutgers defense that has come out and played well. There's 93 just coming down, making the hit. Of course, you can play reckless. You know they can't do much but run the football down there. But Guarneri's had a good day. 6'5", 265. Comes out of Long Island where he played at Plainview. Third and 16 facing quarterback Mike Challenger. He'll hand off to Watley. Watley with a little room to the right. Gets out to the 10, driven out the 15-yard line. Rudy Smith covering some ground along with free safety Thomas Kelly when you look at this play what you see here is a little bit of an experience and that is watch this play when they when they come on the corner here they're going to run on the right side let it run please and watch number 10 Tribbett as he comes up here's the back running okay now just hold it right here this is good. all right let it go a little farther please and right here, there's Tribbett, right there. He does one bad thing, and that is he permits him to get outside. He knows he's got to turn him back inside to where his pursuit is coming. Those are the kind of mistakes you can't afford to make. You've got to learn those things now. Thunderbird on the punt return. 
Gets down to the 28-yard line after the punt by Ken Walters. A 25-yard return for the sophomore from Hyattsville, Maryland. We'll take a break. 8.03 to play. Rutgers in Kent territory, leading 21 to nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, today's afternoons at 4.30. All over America, the stadiums sit empty. The lights are out. Even the hot dog guy is silent. Major League Baseball is gone. What better time, then, to look back, to realize that the nation's past is reflected in the national pastime? And what better guide than Ken Burns, producer of the epic series The Civil War? For nine innings of the best history has to offer, don't miss baseball. satellites and telecourses, public television is reaching out across America, offering people in big cities and small towns alike learning services that might otherwise be unavailable. Public television. In our classrooms, the curriculum is vast and the seating capacity unlimited. Reggie Funderburg with an officially a 23-yard punt return. Got a lot of moves, this kid, and he can be useful to him. This is a good play because not only does he make a great return, but he gets the ball back inside the 30-yard line before, before he's tackled by the strong safety, A.J. Jimerson. And Reggie Funderburg is our N.J. and Scholar athlete this week. A pre-business major. Grade point of average above 3.0. So Reggie Funderburg, our Scholar athlete. Here's Hutton, the freshman. Complete from Ray Lucas. Good call by Stan Paris that time. Comes out first down, good field position. They've been running the football. He's just going to sprint on the corner, and Hutton's going to come down, run the curl pattern, and he's going to put the ball right on the money. Well executed right from here. Good delivery. He's right there in the hole, wide open. And it's nice, Bob, when you can get a 6'5 receiver into that secondary, a big target for Ray Lucas. Now Presley and Tom Wright, the running back. This is Bruce Presley. Bruce Presley to the five. Touchdown, Rutgers. That was a great sequence. Great field position from the punt return. Big play pass and then come right back and get in the end zone. That's what you got to do. That was important to this offense to get that kind of a score. Bruce Presley, his first touchdown of the season, a 13-yard effort with 7.38 left. That leaves him dancing in the aisles. Eddie Dubor, the senior from Hazlitt, on to attempt the point after try from the hold of backup quarterback Robert Higgins. It's up, it's good. So Rutgers has opened up a 28 to nothing lead on the running of this man, Bruce Presley. Just hands the ball up inside, he runs off the block. Great job on the left side, gets a good block from uh, 79 Damon and, and Williams and Bleich, and he's in the end zone. Got on people, and give him a seam, and he's got it. Big touchdown also for Bruce Presley, who's come back and and shared the uh, the role with uh, Terrell Willis. They're going to see a lot of action this year and splitting time and important that he's getting in that end zone for that kind of a score. Bruce Presley today, 14 carries, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Don't forget, we invite you to join us this Thursday night for the 94 debut of the Doug Graber Show. Head coach of the Scarlet Knights will join me each Thursday night live at 8 here on NJN. We hope you'll tune in as we talk about opening night in the stadium. We'll also preview next Saturday's West Virginia contest. Joe Kukowski, the junior from Trenton. 
out of North Burlington High School. Getting ready to kick off. Tony Britt, number seven, is back for Kent University. Tony Britt is here to receive the uh, Bruce Presley may have a little bit of a cramp on the sideline. Kikowski's kick, fielded by Britt on the seven, with the wall in front of him. But that didn't impede the Scarlet Knights number five, Aaron Crowder. <laughs> Aaron Crowder is going to celebrate that special teams tackle, the sophomore out of Newark Shabazz High School. Rick, take it down by number five, Aaron Crowder. So now they'll take over on the 19-yard line. And Bob, we're watching them attend to Bruce Presley on the sideline. I think a little uh, back cramp or uh, back problem there. Here's Watley. Brought down by number 99, Rashad Swinger. You know, Kent uh, State has been struggling with their football program uh, over the years, but they've uh, they're determined to make an effort to improve it by bringing on uh, Jim uh, Cargill as their new head coach, and I think you're going to see changes. I think this team, although they've had a tough time today, uh, still has some players. They've got a great running back in Watley. Uh, their quarterbacks will develop, and uh, they're just a young football team that will come along. Challenger back to pass, under pressure, incomplete. He had the tight end, O.J. Santiago, and Santiago just couldn't hold on. Coverage on the play by Bruce Spaulding and Keith Price. Challenger paid the price that time because he took a hit. There's 81 Santiago, who just didn't come up with it. Santiago is sophomore at 6'7", 239 from Whitby, Ohio. Now Jim Corrigal making his coaching debut tonight. Kent in openers over the year. They've played football for 71 years. They're 30, 34, and 8. Playing in the Mid-American Conference. There's the pressure on Challenger. He gets away on third down. But Keith Price, the defensive back who plays like a linebacker, along with Rasan Giddings, knocks him out of bounds to force the punt. Big play for Price. Nice to see him come up and make the hit on the corner and good pursuit by Giddings from the inside linebacker position to prevent Challenger, who's played a tough game tonight as he tried to run for the first down. He came up two yards short. Walters, who's averaging 34 yards a punt, fields the one hopper and gets it away to Funderburg. On the 38, here's Reggie Funderburg. Spins away from a couple tackles and gets down to the Rutgers 47-yard line. Good second effort, a 33-yard punt. And Funderburg able to return it as the Scarlet Knights are going to switch things up and go to number two quarterback, Robert Higgins. Well, Higgins comes out of a program as you look at number seven coming on the field. He's 6'3", 215. He comes out of South uh, Shore High School, but he played at Nassau Community College, and he's a wishbone quarterback. He's got a strong arm. He's a tough kid. They like him a lot. Also in a wide receiver, Joe Merlino, but they do the same thing and hand off to Willis, and Willis gets three yards out to the 50-yard line before John Durkos makes the tackle. Robert Higgins, Bob, interesting you talk about. He's got a great arm. He's more of a pocket passer, they say, and very tough. They say he's got a linebacker's mentality at the quarterback position. He's got a linebacker's mentality. He's run the football. He's a drop-back passer. They've got a little option in their offense this year, so you can see him playing a role. And look at him. He comes out of Brooklyn, New York. He, uh, he's a kid who's got... Uh, He's got a future here, and uh, he's got experience. Playing at Nassau is a big plus. They've turned out some terrific players who play all over the country. He's hit from behind as he dropped back to pass. Simonowski, coming from that defensive end spot, drops Higgins from behind. Now you've got some substitutes in that offensive line, too. Robert Barr is in there at one tackle position. 87 coming in the game. Woolridge to uh, tight end. He comes in as a blocker. We know about Woolridge. He's out of Damapa. 
6'3", 260, redshirt freshman. Char uh, Michael Theokas in there in one of the tackle positions. And now let's see, we've got a flag on the right-hand side. Charles Woolridge backed up off the line of scrimmage. That drew number 50, Mike Barry, across the line. Immediately, the flag flew and the whistle sounded. Let's see what Nick Define has. Dead ball foul on the offense. That's because you got, you got a lot of substitutes in there. Guys getting their first shot, little action here. There's a good look at number 77, Robert Barr, a junior from Freehold, another Nassau Community College player, a transfer. Doug Graver counting on him at the right tackle position, 6'5", 295 pounds. So Higgins now will face a third and 15 with the clock moving. Five minutes left in the fourth quarter, and Higgins will operate from the shotgun. He whistles a bullet intended for Stephen Harper. It's incomplete. The offensive coordinator Stan Perry said, don't be surprised if Robert Higgins is in the ball game. He's the type of player we have to bring along. He's going to need some repetitions and uh, some game action and <laughs> what a start <laughs> but it'll come it's yeah. nice that he has an opportunity to play and give these other guys a chance to get some game experience oops Slovens punt is blocked you better recover it recovered inside the Rutgers 10 yard line there was pressure coming Dominion Bay was there So was Roger Terry. Let's look at this because there's a lot of white jerseys right in this punter's face as he comes to kick the ball. But from the left side, it was, I believe, 12, Roger Jones. That's right. It was Roger Jones, number 12, who came from the left side to make it. All right, here's the test. The Rutgers defense can take something away from their... They've got Kent first and goal from their own eight-yard line. Challenger bobbled the snap. Again, getting back to the problems from early on. Hallen, the freshman center and the quarterback challenger, lots of problems. They got to go back and work on that snap. It's killed drives for him. It's forced penalties. And right here, as they're getting a chance to go in, they don't make contact. Keith Bryan was trying to work his way into the middle of the scrum after Challenger dropped the ball. Don't think that uh, John Goodikens doesn't want a shutout or does Doug Graber. They've got their first string defense in there right along the line. Guinera, Swinger, Bryant, Sneedon in the front four, the linebackers, Schwartz, Catano, Giddings. No gain on first down, second and goal from the eight. Here's Watley. And Watley is dropped for a loss. They challenged him there. They weren't about to think they could throw the football. All of a sudden, there were seven, eight men right up on that line of scrimmage, filling every gap. And Jim Guarnera brought him down. Look at those numbers. As you long look across, there's red jerseys manning every, every gap position as we let this thing roll. They get penetration. He tries to break it outside, number 93. Guarnera right there to make the hit. Now it's third. Third and 11. Mark Britt wide to the right. Hanson split to the left. Challenger. Cross the middle. Flag flies. Touchdown signal. He found Lance Hanson on a crossing pattern. That's a, that's a dig pattern where the wide receiver goes down and runs right back over the middle. He got good position on the cornerback. Number 20, Hanson from Seville, Ohio, made the catch. So Great. defensive interference. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Touchdown counts. And now Robbie Butts on to attempt the point after try. That was a great catch. And they said about Hanson coming in, he can make the tough catch. That was a tough catch. And he was right on the line, made the catch, and was across the plane for a touchdown. And give credit to Mike Challenger, who's been challenged today <laughs> and tonight. And he hung in there and made the delivery. Now they're sorting things out. Lance Hansen with the touchdown reception spoils the shutout with 325 left in the fourth quarter. All right. We have defensive pass interference against the defense. 
The result was a touchdown. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Well done. So Coach Corrigal, happy to see his team. Put six on the board. This is Ken Walters. It's blocked. And Walters scrambles to regain the ball. Rutgers able to turn away the point after try. Alcides Catano blocks the point after. Rutgers leads 28-6. We'll be right back. Researchers at Rutgers are venturing into uncharted territory, into virtual reality. But they're not playing games. They're exploring the medical applications of a new technology. This kind of university-based research can have a tremendous impact on your life. But it also has an impact here, enriching classroom teaching and keeping our students at the frontiers of their fields. At Rutgers, the tradition of excellence continues. you see the setup and it's going to come from the top of the screen where number 20 Hanson's going to come down and run an inside cut a dig pattern or an in pattern and number three challenges the deliver a ball here we go let it roll he drops back makes a little play fake to his tailback sets up and as he delivers the football here we just hold it right there you see the position that Hanson has gotten on the defensive back here and he's got great position and he's interfered with but he makes the catch right on the end line and crosses the plane and so because of that penalty Kent University will kick off from midfield Bob, right next to our anniversary logo for the college football season. That's the logo that uh, every team in the country will wear on their uniform and most teams will have it somewhere on their football field either end zone or midfield. Well Robbie Butts takes advantage of midfield position kicking through the end zone for a touchback. So Rutgers will take over first and ten from their own 20-yard line. Now Bob, you know, you talked about the logo there, the 125th anniversary of the first college football game. Of course, out in South Bend, Indiana, the College Football Hall of Fame, well under construction. Yes, we're very excited. The steel is going up right now. If somebody gets through South Bend, of course, in the next few months, they're going to see the structure. It will be dedicated a year from now when Notre Dame opens its season against Northwestern. And uh, things are really happening out there. It's going to be a great shrine to the college game. It's going to be an opportunity for people to see players from, from the beginning of football right to the present. For the present, this is Terrell Willis. A gain of five yards off the handoff from Robert Higgins. Of course, it's, it's, it's got to be important. And I think the reason you brought it up, Pat, is they have so many illustrious alumni who have come out of South Bend, particularly Notre Dame, and uh, you, might, you might want to talk about your own personal experiences there. How many times you were on probation? No, I mean, how many times, how much, what a great experience you had there. I thought you could talk about the prestigious Kent alumni, like Notre Dame head coach Lou Holtz. That's right. Yankee GM Gene Michael. Oh, boy. Jack Lambert of the Pittsburgh Steelers all went to Kent State University. Here's Willis. Tries to get outside. Flag flies from the flight. Brian Miller makes the tackle for the Golden Flashes. It's going to be interesting. This penalty may go against Rutgers. It may be on number 15, Jonathan Gibbs, a wide receiver, who may have come back and either thrown oh. an illegal block or held. And that's what they got him for from the corner. Holding on the offense will back the Scarlet Knights up. That'll be a big penalty. They'll push him back, uh, give him a second and real long yardage, put a little pressure on Robert Higgins. It'll be interesting to see what Stan Parrish calls for him here. There they are. Kent University famous alumni, Lambert, Holtz, Michael, the late Thurman Munson, the great Yankee catcher, Cy Young award winner Steve Stone, Arsenio Hall, and Michael Keaton. Very well done. Very well. 
Of course, our spotter, Bill Friel, wants us to mention John Nottingham as well. That's right. The old bowling ball. What a great back he was. And none other than Bill Friel, the man with all the numbers and all the, the spots did it for us. Willis tries to get outside. He ran about 30 yards to get about six. Justin Sanford, a freshman, ran him out of bounds. And the clock now with 224 and showing. So we have a chance. We want to thank our statistician, Mark Rossman. And our spotter, Bill Friel. Helping us to Town, Pennsylvania. They love to hear that name, Bill Friel. It's been said from the beginning. He was here for the first game. Maybe. 125 years, right? <laughs> Stephen Harper and Funderburg are split to the right. Higgins is going to carry it himself. There's some of that option quarterback. Look at him stretch for the first down, but I don't think he's going to get it. Gerald Washington finally brought him down. Higgins brought down with good size at 6'3", 215. Let's see what happens here. A block punt gave uh, Ken an opportunity to get in the end zone before. Let's see if they come after this punter again. Sloven is back. Nine men on the line of scrimmage. They're coming after him, but he gets it away. Vance Benton fields on the 28-yard line and gets out for a gain of five yards on the return with 142 left. And that's a 43-yard punt for Jared Sloven. Derek Ward and Norris Crawford make the stop on the special teams for the Scarlet Knights. Don't forget our next game on NJN featuring the Rutgers Scarlet Knights will be Rutgers against Cincinnati. And we'll bring that to you on Sunday morning, October 16th, as we get a look at Andrew Gable, who's in. A tackle for the Knights. Challenger still at quarterback. And that's Ron Keller, the sophomore from Lindenwald, who tackles Challenger for a loss back around the 29-yard line. It's great to see these younger players getting in. Ron Keller, who John Goodekens, the defensive coordinator, says can run well, 6'4", 250, makes the hit. Also in the game, uh, number 72, Mike Karwacki at the defensive tackle position. A freshman out of Delran High School at 6'5", 235. They like him a lot as a prospect. Well, Wacky sees time as we take a look at him. A two-way starter in high school at Delran, and he's involved in their nickel defense package. Scott Peeler, a freshman from Cherry Hill East High School. Played in the high school all-star game that we did a little earlier this summer. That's right, our first Fidelity North-South High School All-Star Classic. And we're talking about Scott Peeler, number 42. Bench presses 400 pounds, one of the strongest players on the team as a freshman. Well, the comment made earlier, these linebackers, they're young, but they're going to have to play. And Peeler, as the season progresses, may have an opportunity and get the time to play. It's a fine prospect, 6'1", 215 pounds. Also in there, you mentioned Gable, Karwacki, Keller. Peeler at linebacker. And a freshman, Paul Rivers, number 17, now in it. Free safety. Top prospect coming out of Oxon Hill, Maryland. Fine looking athlete. Good size, six foot one, 190 pounds. And Challenger wants to pass. Flush from the pocket. He'll have to run. Hit from behind by Kelly Keegan, a redshirt freshman from Merritt Island, Florida. Keegan, number 98. And then Rusty Schwartz. Finished him off. There's Keegan. 6'4", 235. Third and eight. Challenger wasting no time. Hands off to Watley. Watley straight ahead. First down for Kent University to the 48-yard line. But clock running down now. Under a minute left. And it's interesting, they've gone the whole way with Challenger. We thought we might see Riesland, the other quarterback, but it's been the uh, junior challenger out of Miami, Ohio, Miami, Florida, excuse me, who's done it long. They lob it down the middle. Intended for the tight end, Mark Porter. 
well defended by the Scarlet Knights. There's Paul Rivers. That's the play where you get this tight end. They think you're in a two coverage, meaning you got the safety out of the middle and they try and run that tight end who's a good receiver Porter up the middle. But that time, as you described it, Rivers diagnosed the play, came up and made, made the play on the football. Almost came up with the interception. Aston Watley has gone over the 100-yard mark. He has carried 30 times for 101 yards. With Very impressive, Pat. I think that he did that with all the mistakes they've made, the penalties they've had. He did it much on his own. Well, he said he's going to be the franchise player if they're going to have any success, and he has been strong today. Challenger, straight drop across the middle. Incomplete. The tight end, Mark Porter, couldn't hang on. The ball was thrown behind him. Very difficult for him to catch it. He was open underneath. Thrown behind that stops the clock with 40 seconds remaining. Third down. Up a third down in 10. Keith Price in the ball game at one cornerback position. Number 22, Michael Roberts, the sophomore to Abington, PA, who has played a lot of football here last year, playing at the other cornerback. And, of course, Crawford at free safety and Rivers back there at the other safety. Here's the handoff to Watley. Oh, he gets down to the Rutgers 47 yard line so he continues to tack yards onto that total. Rusty Schwartz made the tackle. That'll bring up a fourth down and about five yards. So Aston Watley gaining 105 yards in his 94 debut for Kent University. Challenger. Complete to the tight end, Mark Porter. With five seconds remaining, Rivers made the tackle for the Scarlet secondary. And timeout called by Kent University. That time they just got uh, the tight end Porter and ran him from the tight end position on a little sideline cut. He got down in the scene. They were playing zone coverage, and it was nice execution. Got him enough yardage for the first down. So five seconds remaining on what has been a successful opening night for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They'll get the victory and they'll also set a campus record for attendance here at Rutgers. Over 33,000 attending. And don't forget, coming up on NJN as you look to us for sports on October 16th, Sunday morning at 10, we'll bring Rutgers and Cincinnati your way. And of course, each Thursday night, beginning this Thursday, we'll have the Doug Graber Show as the head coach of the Scarlet Knights joins me each Thursday night at 8. And we'll be talking about this contest and previewing the West Virginia Mountaineers who were victorious in their debut today, or their second game of the season, rather. That's the second game of the season against a MAC conference opponent. Defeating Ball State. But a tough game, close game. Other surprises today, how about Pittsburgh staying close with Texas. Johnny well, Majors getting it going back. Yeah, they'll get it going. It's going to take them a little bit longer, but you know his ability to recruit, the tradition. Great coach, and they'll be very competitive. Four wide receivers in the ball game for Kent. This will be Challenger's last hope. He throws it into the end zone. Incomplete as the cannon sounds in Rutgers. Wins the first game in its new stadium, defeating Kent 28 to 6. So they'll send 33,000 home happy. As the Scarlet Knights can now look to West Virginia, they take on the Mountaineers here at Rutgers Stadium next Saturday at 12 o'clock. While we have a chance, we'll take a break, then we'll come back with a post-game report. You're watching NJN, the New Jersey Channel. Researchers at Rutgers are venturing into uncharted territory, into virtual reality. But they're not playing games. They're exploring the medical applications of a new technology. This kind of university-based research can have a tremendous impact on your life. But it also has an impact here. 
enriching classroom teaching and keeping our students at the frontiers of their fields. At Rutgers, the tradition of excellence continues. Well, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights open up the 1994 season with a 28-6 victory over Kent State University. And Bob Cassio, all said and done. Ray Lucas, one rushing touchdown, one passing touchdown, and they're undefeated looking to West Virginia and a Big East Conference opponent. Absolutely, and with the emotion building up for this new stadium and new game, you know, you got to feel good about coming away with a decisive victory. And Lucas played very well. He made a couple of mistakes, threw the ball up a couple of times for interceptions, but more importantly, he's got experience. He won't make those mistakes day in and day out. And I think you can only look towards uh, promise for the offense. I was most impressed with their defense. That defense hustled. They played hard. Granted, Kent is not a great measure of what they're going to have the rest of the way, but they played hard when they had to, and people came alive, and I think it's going to be an exciting group to watch as long as they can stay healthy, Pat. That's killed Rutgers in the past. They don't have a great deal of depth. They've got to develop some young players. But I think overall it was a great opener, a great win, and they can start concentrating now on their Big East opponents. Well, if you're going to open up a new stadium, you want to send people home happy, and Doug Graber and the Scarlet Knights did that with a 28-6 victory. Don't forget our next Rutgers telecast will be October 16th as we join you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. as the Scarlet Knights take on the Cincinnati Bearcats. And I invite you to join me Thursday night when Doug Graber joins me for the Doug Graber Show as we talk Scarlet Night football Thursday nights live at 8 on NJN. Again, the final score, Rutgers 28, Kent 6. And so for Bob Cassiola, I'm Pat Scanlon. So long, everybody. this fall. Be sure to join host Pat Scanlon and Rutgers head